Hi there, this is Grant, and in this tutorial, I want to introduce you to StoryMap.js. This is free online software that lets you tell a story with media that could be images, video, or audio, and augment that story with specific locations on a map. This is part one of a three-part series about StoryMap.js. Here in part one, I'll introduce you to StoryMap.js so you can see if this software might be something you're interested in using. Part two will cover building a story map, and part three will cover sharing or publishing the finished result. If you want to jump ahead to either parts two or three right now, just click the link you see on the screen or in the description below. We're going to be covering the StoryMap.js authoring tool here. So this means you'll be building your story map and saving your media on this site. But you should know that since this is open source software, there's an option to download StoryMap.js. And if you have a web server at your disposal and the technical know-how, that's the big thing, you can host your own instance of StoryMap.js. That may work better for you if you want to be in complete control of your story maps in the future. But I think by far the majority who watch this tutorial will want to use the authoring tool and save their story maps on the StoryMap.js site. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at what StoryMap.js can do. This is the StoryMap.js homepage, and I recommend you take a minute to check it out. This is where you'll start making your own story map, and it's the best place to find examples, tips, and tricks about the software. Now, one of the best ways to learn about a piece of software is to look at what others have done with it. So let's take a look at a couple of nicely done examples so you can get a sense of what a story map can look like. Let's have a look at this one, the Game of Thrones Arya's Journey. As you'll see in a second, it's a little old and some of the linked media has disappeared, but it'll give you a good idea of the kind of things a story map can do. On the left, you see a map, and on the right, you see some heading text and some text introducing the story map. Now that's something that'll carry through every slide that you see in a story map. A map on the left side and some media of some kind on the right. What we're looking at here is the story map title screen. It displays an overall map view that includes all the location markers that have been added in the story map. Clicking the right arrow takes us to the next slide. As you can see, the map zooms to the location of the first slides marker on the left and shows some media on the right. In this case, we've got a deleted YouTube video, a heading, and some text describing the slide. Notice here that there's also a background image of Winterfell Castle providing context for the video and the text. So this slide gives us a good place to stop and learn about the four main building blocks of every story map slide. First, there's a location marker specified on the map. On the right, you have three options. In this middle space, you can have some media. That could be an image or a video, or maybe an animated GIF, a heading and some text, and a background image. At least one of these three elements is required on the right side of the slide, but you can include any combination of the three. Let's go to the next slide. In this case, we have an image with some text, but no background image. In this case, another YouTube video and a background image. In this case, an image, no background image, and some text. And in this case, just the background image and text. And this is effective because we're zoomed in on those characters. So now that we've seen the slide examples in this story map, you can see that your entire story map is made up of variations of these three media elements on the right side and a location on a map on the left side. Finally, notice at the top left, there's a map overview button. If I click that, we return to the title slide version of the map where all of the location markers are shown. There's also a back to the beginning button, which takes us back to the beginning of the story map. Now let's take a look at one other example quickly. Of course, that example we just looked at used the entire screen to display the story map, but I wanna show you one other example here that displays in a more confined space, like a narrower blog post. In this case, in the story map, the map shows at the top whereas what we saw as the right side of the screen shows beneath it. If I click between slides, the map changes, as does the bottom section as well. This is how the presentation of the story map adapts to a smaller space. Of course, the same would be true on a mobile phone. Okay, let's dive in to get a taste of how to build a story map. To create your own story maps, you need an account on the StoryMap.js site. And since the site uses Google authentication, you'll need a Google account in order to use it. So first, make sure you're logged into your Google account, 
then navigate to the storymap.js site, then click the Make a Story Map button. Sign in with your Google account. Now you're prompted to make your first story map. For this tutorial, I'm going to create a short story map about the first five temples of an 88 temple pilgrimage on the island of Shikoku in Japan. I'll give the story map a name. and click Create. OK, you get your first look at the Story Map authoring tool. I'll just do a quick overview of the screen here and then dive deeper into building a Story Map in part two of the tutorial. You'll see here there are four main sections. First, the map. Let's take up most of the screen here and we see a map of the entire Earth because I haven't specified any specific locations yet. At the left, you see a column where our slides live. At the top of the list, we see in red the title slide. That one is set apart from the other slides because remember, it contains all the map locations you set in your story map as a whole. To add additional slides, you click the Add Slide button here. At the bottom left is where you specify what media you want to include to help tell your story. At the bottom right is a text editor. This is where you give the slide a headline and add some more descriptive text if you want. In the Arya's Journey example, we saw some great uses of background images. You edit the background by using this button. You can either add a color or a background image here. So that should do it as a quick overview of the authoring tool. I'll cover any of the other buttons you see on the screen here in part two of the tutorial. So this introduction, I hope, gives you a general idea of what StoryMap.js can do. If you're the kind of person who likes to learn by hunting and pecking through a piece of software, this might be all you need. Dive in and start using StoryMap.js for yourself. For others, continue on to part two, where we'll look at how to build a story map, and then part three, where we'll walk through the steps for sharing a story map. If you want to jump to either of those right now, just click on the links on your screen or in the description below. Thanks for listening, and see you in parts two and three.